So today I want to go over how I feel about Obsidian and Rome research. And what I wanted to do was go through each program and tell you how I feel about them. All the pros and the cons, I created a Venn diagram, which I have not done in a long time. So if you are looking into one of these programs, you don't know which one to use, they are very similar. Maybe this video can help. This is a very personal analysis of these two programs. It's really specifically what I feel about them in relation to my note-taking style. So I don't go through every single feature, but I do get into a good amount of stuff. Obsidian and Rome Research are marketed to users that are looking for a knowledge management tool or a place for connected thinking. They are knowledge management tools, or in simpler words, a place to write notes. Knowledge management is simply the process of how a user goes about writing notes, and more importantly, how a user contextualizes information through features like making connections with bilateral linking or backlinking, comparing information to personal experiences with daily documents, and also organizing notes in a way that makes returning to and comparing information easy. Okay, moving on to what I feel about these programs and which one I prefer. Let's start with the price points. Obsidian is free, however, there is an option called Catalyst that is $25 up front, not a monthly payment. And in this tier, you get early access to upgrades, special badges in the community, and more. What I really like about this $25 flat payment is that if I were to go into an app store and see Obsidian, I would totally pay $25 for it. It is appropriately priced. Rome Research is priced at $15 a month, and this is for their professional tier. This is steep for someone who's on a tight budget, but if you are in academia, if you are in a field that requires a lot of research, if you're someone who just likes doing research and doing a lot of analytic research, $15 a month, not that big a deal if you know for sure you're going to be using this program a lot. Now, as for the features, here's what they both have that I appreciate equally. They both provide an enhanced markdown plain text style with extremely intuitive shortcuts and link creation. They both have a side panel feature and customizable graphs that work perfectly fine. Obsidian's is a bit cleaner, but not enough for me to say it's overall more superior than Rome's. Now onto the actual point of this video. What are the pros and cons, in my opinion, between Obsidian and Rome? And again, this is based off of my own note-taking style. So if there's anything in here that I missed or you feel that I should have talked about, it's probably because I don't use that feature very often. So firstly, Obsidian saves all of your files locally, and this is huge for me. Upon opening the app, you're prompted to create a new vault or really just a new folder on your computer. And every note created inside a vault is a markdown file inside a folder. So the UI is really clean. Uh, it isn't too busy. There aren't excessive features to learn. So once you get that vault set up, you can pretty much dive right in, which leads me to a negative about Rome. There is a really steep learning curve for someone who is completely unfamiliar with programs like this. And Rome is web-based, so that means it can be slow to load and data isn't as secure. So yes, technically it is more likely for data loss to occur in Rome, but it has never happened to me, so it's not that big of an issue. The loading time is more of an issue. It does take longer. It feels like the interface is also a little bit slower. Now, a positive for Rome is its text formatting. Seeing as these programs are mostly in bullet point style, tabbing a child block under a parent block is something you're going to do frequently. In Rome, you can click anywhere on a block and tab over like this. But in Obsidian, this isn't the case. You have to place the cursor at the start of the block or highlight the entire block to tab. Also, you can zoom in to individual blocks in Rome. 
Also something you cannot do in Obsidian. So as for those sidebars, every single time you create a link in Obsidian and then activate the link or click on it, it appears in the sidebar automatically. I feel like this functionality is a hit or miss with most users. And in Rome, those links do not automatically populate in the sidebar. You have to actually go up to a button, a star button in the top right hand corner to add as a sidebar page. This is, again, hit or miss. It depends on what you're looking for in terms of your note taking style. In Rome, I can see how you wouldn't want all these links populating on the sidebar. It can get out of hand, it can get messy. But for me, I do prefer Obsidian in this regard. Also, Obsidian is compatible with Zettelkassen. In fact, there are specific settings to configure for Zettelkassen, which is really nice and adds to that user friendliness. Rome is also Zettelkassen friendly, technically, but doesn't have these settings. Also a huge plus for me, Obsidian workspaces are customizable. They're drag and drop windows. And you can open up not just one side panel, but multiple side panels, and you can do it vertically and horizontally. I like tucking my graph into the lower left hand corner and watching it grow as I add more pages. It's really nice. But with that being said, in Obsidian, when you go to edit a page and you want to then navigate within that page, you have to toggle between an edit mode and a preview mode. This can get annoying if you don't enjoy staring at Markdown the majority of the time. In Rome, this isn't an issue. Every block you're in enters edit mode and upon clicking away from a block, the links are active. You don't have to convert the entire page. So in terms of connecting notes via links, so internal linking from one note in your system to another note, both of these programs have backlinking capabilities. Backlinking essentially creates an automatic navigation back to a page a note is referenced in. Rome is way better in this regard from where the backlinks are placed to the filters that are available and the full context of the block that is associated with the link. And it's not like Obsidian doesn't have these things, it's just far more stripped back. Again, this is more of a preference thing. If you are looking for a more robust backlinking function, I would choose Rome. Now, if you don't want to merely just reference another page, but you want to reference a block or a paragraph bullet point within that other page, both programs have the ability to link to blocks. However, I do have to say, Obsidian, as of recording this, is only letting Insider Build or Catalyst users, so that $25 flat payment, use this feature. That is because it's not going to be released until the next upgrade. That's just when I'm recording this. Chances are, in the near future, this will be a feature. Now for block embeds inside of Rome, there are a lot of options, like a lot of options. It's impressive. There's an option to embed as a window, as inline text, as an alias link, and you can swap blocks. There's also inline calculating and a Pomodoro timer option. There is very much a lot happening here, which leads me to that Rome setback. There is a steep learning curve. If you want a program that is basically right out of the box, easy to use, I would not choose Rome. If you're a more serious note taker, invest your learning and your time into figuring out this program. It's not going to take forever to figure out, just a little bit of tinkering, but it is harder to learn. Going into the idea of peering into a linked page, both programs do provide pop-up windows. So upon mousing over a link, you can see a pop-up window that gives you all of the information from the page you're linked to without having to open up a side panel 
or completely navigate into that page. This is wonderful. Like this is something I like. In Obsidian, this is a plugin. So you'll have to go into the settings and toggle on that pop-up window, I'm pretty sure. In Rome, it's just part of the default program. In Obsidian, I feel like the pop-up window is far superior. It's a lot quicker. Overall, definitely on the side of Obsidian for this one. Now, speaking of those plugins in Obsidian, even though Rome has a lot of features, Obsidian has a growing list of these plugins that you can toggle on and off. Another reason why I like Obsidian more in regards to UI experience. Now, even though I never use this feature in Rome, like I use it very, very infrequently, it has to be said, the query function or retrieving information, which is a big part of knowledge management, is very involved in Rome. They have this thing called queries, whereas you can go in and search for very specific information and you can compare several very specific bits of information together. And this is great for research. This is great if you're trying to write a thesis. It's really powerful. Before I tell you which program I prefer, here are the features that are my favorites in both programs. So in Obsidian, it's the customizing your workspace that I like the most. The drag and drop, being able to see my graph right there on the screen build as I go along, and also the fact that you can activate links inside of that graph quickly. Also that built-in community-based CSS. You can go into a page of wonderful creative CSS designs from the community in Obsidian and you can toggle them on and off and they build over time as well. Like new themes are added. So if you're not really savvy with CSS, that's really nice. For Rome, my favorite feature and really my favorite feature between both programs is a feature called versions. It's so simple, but so effective. Upon writing notes in a block, you can add hidden alternative versions of that block inside a table-like format. It mostly minimizes text-heavy pages for me and is wonderful. So the consensus, what is the app I prefer personally? that would be Obsidian. I know it's very simple, but I'm just more willing to return to Obsidian. I think whenever I use Rome, I just feel a bit tired and not as motivated. I can't, I, that's the best way I can explain it. Um, but that doesn't mean Rome is worse or that Obsidian is superior. I think on paper, Rome is actually better. It's a better choice. It has more in it which is why the price is higher. You get what you pay for, essentially. And all of those impressive features that Rome offers, it's just, I don't really need them. They aren't necessary for me. Bottom line, if you're looking into either one of these programs and you do wanna pick one over the other, these are some things to keep in mind. So if you are in academia, again, I did say this in the beginning, but I just wanna reiterate, if you are looking into taking really intense notes, taking a lot of notes, taking notes daily, if you're exploring note taking in a more analytical approach, in a more thorough way than just simply making folders and putting files inside of those folders, if you want to take smarter notes, I mean, Obsidian, you can absolutely use a lot of these methodologies. You can use Zettelkasten, you can build a second brain but you're just gonna have less features. It's gonna be more stripped back, that's all. They both do the exact same thing, pretty much. So it really is all about what you're using these programs for. Also, Obsidian is free, so there's no harm in checking it out. That is pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. I know I didn't go through absolutely everything, but I hope this helped. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I do want to say that I am going to start uploading videos more consistently in that I'm going to be uploading once a week every Sunday. 
before I was uploading pretty much just whenever I felt like it and that got really stressful. So every Sunday you can see a new video from me. That's it. Have a good day. <laughs>